They don't call her the Queen of Thorns for nothing. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 sassiest Elena Tyrell moments. Not now, Mace. Lord Tywin and I are speaking. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the best moments featuring the matriarch of the Tyrell house. Because she plays such an important role in several plot lines, there will be spoilers. You have been warned. War is war, but killing a man at a wedding. Horrid. Number 10. Put the pen down, dear. Despite the fact that the Lannisters and the Tyrells are technically allies, at least at this point in the show, there is no love lost between Olena and Cersei. You must be exhausted. Put the pen down, dear. We both know you're not writing anything. Having just returned to King's Landing to rectify the imprisonment of her grandson, Olena is in no mood for Cersei's transparent antics. Frustrated by the fact that Cersei won't even look her in the eye, she delivers this zinger. She adds insult to injury by deeming her a tart. And the famous tart, Queen Cersei. Olena certainly gets Cersei's attention in a hurry with these back-to-back -back insults. As for your veil threats. What veil? Number 9. You are not the queen. In another classic scene between the Queen of Thorns and the Queen Mother, Olena makes sure Cersei remembers her place. You are not the queen, because you're not married to the king. Understandably, Cersei's a bit pissed off about her treatment at the hands of the High Sparrow and the Faith, and having to march naked through the streets. She is keen to exact revenge, but makes the grave mistake of slighting Marjorie's rightful claim to the throne. Fed up with Cersei's antics, Olena dishes out some cold, hard truth. I do appreciate these things can get a bit confusing in your family. Number 8. Meeting with Lord Tywin My grandson is the pride of High Garden, the most desirable bachelor in all seven kingdoms. Your daughter is rich, the most beautiful woman in all seven kingdoms, and the mother of the king. Old. When two of the wisest and wittiest characters on the show meet, you know you're in for a great but tense scene. I'm something of an expert on the subject. Olena meets with Lord Tywin to discuss a second marriage between their two families, with Loras Tyrell and Cersei as the potential match. While it's clear they both respect each other, Tywin and Olena voice their concerns liberally. Tywin cites Loras' homosexuality, while Olena alludes to Cersei's age and incestuous relationship with her brother Jaime. Brothers and sisters? Where I come from, that stain would be very difficult to wash out. Tywin ultimately has the trump card, however, and in one of the rare instances on the show, actually gets the better of the Queen of Thorns. If you refuse to marry Loras to Cersei, I will name him to the King's Guard. Number 7. Let the Grown Women Speak After discovering that Cersei blew up the Great Sept of Baelor, with Loras, Marjorie, and Mace Tyrell inside, Olenna travels to the place where they hate the Lannisters the most, Dorne. There, she meets with Ilaria Sand and the Sand Snakes, attempting to seek vengeance on the new Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. However, Olena is in absolutely no mood for the Sand Snakes, insulting all three of them, and clearly expressing her desire to speak with Ilaria and only Ilaria. What is your name again? Barbara? Obara. Obara. You look like an angry little boy. Don't presume to tell me what I need. Considering many fans of the series dislike Dorne, and the Sand Snake specifically, it's not surprising this scene was well received. Forgive my sister. What she lacks in diplomacy, Do she makes. Oh, shut up, dear. Anything from you? No. Good. Let the grown women speak. Number six, giving advice to Daenerys. I realize you're here out of hatred for Cersei and not love for me. But I swear to you, she will pay for what she's done. Ever the blunt voice of reason, Olena attempts to give some important advice to Daenerys in her attempt to conquer the Seven Kingdoms. Olena seeks to guide the young queen, insisting that she be wary of clever men, namely her hand, Tyrion. Will you take a bit of advice from an old woman? He's a clever man, your hand. I've known a great many clever men. I've outlived them all. You know why? I ignored them. She reminds Daenerys of her legacy, citing that she needs to remember what she was born to be. Olena's advice plays an important role in Daenerys' decision to let her inner and literal dragon loose. Not for nothing, this interaction ultimately permits Olena to exact her revenge on the Lannisters. Are you a sheep? No. You're a dragon. Be a dragon. Number 5. Discussing with Tyrion 
In another classic Game of Thrones battle of the wits, Tyrion and Olena bicker about the upcoming Lannister Tyrell wedding. More specifically, how much it will cost. What good is the word extravagant if it can't be used to describe a royal wedding? Olena takes Tyrion by surprise when she reveals her knowledge of the Tyrells' contributions to the Lannisters' wartime expenses. What is it, 12,000 infantrymen the Tyrell family has supplied? While Olena eventually agrees to help with the cost of the royal wedding, she can't help but get a few shots in at Tyrion before. Beforehand. You don't have to lecture me about wartime expenses. I'm quite familiar with it. And we are so grateful for your contributions, which are necessary for the preservation of the realm. She also can't resist laying into Podrick Payne for his incompetence. Savage. God's boy, that's enough. We're not in a tavern. Pardon me. No need to speak. Number four, Golden Rose speech and meeting Lord Varys. House sigils in Game of Thrones are incredibly important. Where a wolf indicates the Starks, a lion the Lannisters, and a dragon the Targaryens, House Tyrell has an unthreatening golden rose. Let's just say Olena's not much of a fan. Roses are boring, dear. Growing strong. Ha! The dullest words of any house. Catching her in the middle of a hilarious rant, her quick wits outmatch even Lord Varys. The city has been made brighter by your presence. The city is made brighter by my presence. Is that your usual line, Lord Varys? You here to seduce me? Normally the king of quips, the spider finds himself dumbfounded by Olena's repartee. Might I sit? No. Eventually Olena relents and agrees to walk with him. You surrender rather easily. Walk with me. I know the walls have ears, but apparently the shrubbery does too. Number three, Olena meets Sansa and Cheese Boy scene. Don't you dare try telling Olena Tyrell when she gets to eat her cheese. Bring me some cheese. The cheese will be served after the cakes, my lady. The cheese will be served when I want it served, and I want it served now. While we admire the courage of the cheese boy, Olena quickly puts him in his place. All the while, a bewildered Sansa looks on in shock, and perhaps admiration. Of course, Olena as always has an ulterior motive. She attempts, and eventually succeeds, in making Sansa feel safe enough to spill the beans on Joffrey's true nature. Speak freely, child. We would never betray your confidence, I swear it. By the time the scene ends, Olena gets the truth. But more importantly, she gets her cheese. Oh, here comes my cheese. Number two, Olena and Cersei. We never get sick of seeing these two at each other's throats. Fed up with Cersei, especially for her role in allowing the Faith Militant into King's Landing, and for essentially causing the imprisonment of Marjorie and Loras, Olena lays into her. After dozens of tenuous moments and many thinly veiled threats, the battle between Cersei and Olena comes to a head in this scene, as the Queen of Thorns delivers a dagger of a line. I wonder if you're the worst person I've ever met. She viciously tears into Cersei, leaving her speechless once again. You've lost Cersei. It's the only joy I could find in all this misery. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Your grandfather gave me a necklace, just like this one. My 51st name day. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. Does it move or talk? I want to speak with you alone. Number one, I want her to know it was me. Tell Cersei. I want her to know it was me. With her house all but gone, and her castle taken by the Lannisters, Olena Tyrell knows the end is near. Olena delivers a compelling, but applause-worthy speech, even getting one last dig at Joffrey in. He really was a cunt, wasn't he? Olena recounts to Jaime the lengths she has gone to protect her family, and how even she thought Cersei went too far. But your sister has done things I was incapable of imagining. After drinking the poison given to her by Jamie, she admits what the audience has known for some time, that she was the one responsible for Joffrey's murder. A shocking scene. Not at all what I intended. It was the perfect mic drop for one of the series' most savage characters. She's a disease. I regret my role in spreading it. You will too. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.